in the name of Allah, the compassionate, the most merciful, praise be to Allah. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Welcome to lesson six of our biology classes. We are still doing uh, locomotion or support and movement in plants and animals. Our lesson today will be ribcage and sternum. Ribcage and sternum. In our previous lesson, I introduced the parts of endoskeleton. You remember? Parts of endoskeleton. And then I said, endoskeleton in mammals. Endoskeleton is mainly divided into two main parts. We said endoskeleton is divided one into axial, axial skeleton or appendicular skeleton. Appendicular skeleton. When I said axial skeleton, I said axial from the word axis uh, are those that are found along this length, like the skull or the cranium, the bones of the vertebral column, the hip cage and the sternum. That's what we are calling the axial skeleton. When I'm talking about axial skeleton, I mean the skull, the rib cage and the sternum, rib cage and the sternum. And then we also have the bones of the vertebral column. Bones of the vertebral column. Again, when I'm talking about when I'm talking about the appendicular skeleton, I'm talking about the pectoral giddle and the forelimb, the pelvic giddle, and then the hinder limb. Basically, that is what uh, uh, parts of the skeleton are. In our previous lesson, I started with the skull where I said a skull is a rigid framework that provides protection to the brain. Not only to the brain, it also provides protection to some sense organs like the nasal cavity, the ear, and the eye. To provide the protection required, I say the skull is rigid and it tends to be very firm. A skull, one may think it is a one solid bone, but it's not. It's made up of small bones, that are attached to one another at an immovable or fixed joints that are called such as. Fixed point that we call such as. A skull, we said, has a depressions. The depressions in the skull are to accommodate the sense organs like the eye and the ear, providing physical, I mean, providing protection against physical damage. Within the skull, on the skull also, we have small perforations, small holes. And what are they? These holes, we said, are pathways for blood vessels and nerve fibers going in and out of the brain. At the back of the skull, or at the back of the cranium, we said, is a big perforation. That big perforation is what we call foramen magnum. That one acts, or it acts as, a, as, a, as an entry point, or it serves as an entry point of spinal cord in the brain. Have it discussed that. I also say the skull, at the, at the back, the skull has got two round surfaces. It has got two round surfaces that are called the condyles that articulate with the first bone of the vertebral column. It articulates with the atlas, bringing about nothing movement or upward and downward movement of the head. Our lesson today will be hip cage and the sternum, but before that, here with me today, I have the human skeleton. Here, I have the full human skeleton. With this, we can be able to see the different parts of the skeleton. The two main parts, the axial skeleton I've been talking about, the appendicular skeleton we have been talking about, yes. And when we started this particular lesson, support, I mean support in animals, I said the rigid framework in animals is given by bones and the skeleton. Yes? The other day I said our body is just made up of bones. And then the muscles covering them, some internal organs and fluid. Yeah. This is it now. This is the human skeleton. This is the human skeleton. This is the skull I was talking about. Yeah? This is the human skull. This is the human skull mainly. And then I also have the bones of the forelimbs, bones that are found in the forelimb here, here, and then I have got the rib cage, the ribs that are found within the chest cavity. These are the ribs, and then there is this bone at the center to which 
the ribs are attached to this bone at the center that mediates the bones from the ribs from either side of the body. This one is what we are calling the sternum. This is the sternum and this is the hip cage. For today's lesson, we'll be doing the hip cage, the ribs, and then the sternum. Our previous lesson was about the skull. After we are done with that, remember, I'm doing axial skeleton. Axial skeleton, we said it's made up of the skull. We have discussed it. Axial skeleton is made up of the hip cage and the sternum. That's what we were to do today. But for you to see, these are the hips. These are the hips. The hip cage found in the chest cavity. And then this is the sternum. Because it is found between the two breasts. Sometimes we call it the breast bone in a layman's language. After I'm done with the ribcage and the sternum, we will start with the vertebral column, bones of the vertebral column. What do I mean by bones of the vertebral column? These are the backbones. This is the backbone, and uh, if you can follow me, yes, yeah. This is it. These are the bones of the vertebral column I'm talking about. These are the bones of the vertebral column. All this starting immediately after the cranium or immediately after the skull, we have got vertebral bones. Downward up to the up to the tail. Downward up to the tail. Good. That's about the axial skeleton, the skull, the hip cage and the vertebral column. What about the apical skeleton? Yes. Bones are only those two main parts, fall under those two main parts. And the pentacular skeleton, we have the pectoral guido. When I talk about the pectoral guido, I mean this clavicle. There's a bone here. There's a bone here. That is because the bone is found in an area where the collar of the shirt hangs around. In a layman's language, we call it the collar bone. This one now. This one. Yes. The clavicle. This is what we are calling the clavicle. And then I also have the shoulder blade here. I have the shoulder blade. We call it the scapula. This is what I mean, the pectoral guido. And then the forelimb. In the forelimb, in the forelimb, I have this bone here. We call that the humerus. I have two main bones here, two bones at this particular region. Those are the ulna and radius. We will come to it and discuss in length. Then, there are some bones that are found within our palm here. You can feel it at the back of the hand. These ones, we call them the, the carpals. We call them this one, the bones that are found within here, within the wrist. Within the wrist here, yes, at the wrist, this joint, we have bones that we call these small circular bones, we call them the carpals. Then, these ones, we call them the metacarpals, and then the bones that are found within the fingers, we call them the phalanges, call them the phalanges, call them the phalanges. Good. It is also the same, and then we also have the pelvic guido. When I talk about the pelvic guido, I'm talking about the bones that are found around the pelvic region. We, I always say there are two halves. We have this half and this half. Each half is made up of three bones, the ilium, the ischium, and the pupils, and then they are attached to one another around the pupic symphosis by a tough cartilage. Good. These are the pelvic, the, the pelvic guido I'm talking about. The pelvic guido I'm talking. Good. And then I also have this bone that I found within the thigh, and I'm calling the thigh bone. The thigh bone. The thigh bone is what we are calling the fuma. Yes? And then at this joint around the knee, call it the patella, we have got a joint that we call the hinge joint. Then after this particular joint, we have two bones here, the tibia, and then we also have the tibia and the fibula, the tibia and the fibula. And then around the ankle here, the ankle where the leg joins with the foot, the ankle in this particular region, we have small circular bones just like them, the couples here, and then we call them the tassels, call them the tassels. Then the bones within here, call them the metatassels, and then the bones of the finger, call them the phalanges. So basically, this is what uh, the skeleton is mainly all about.
the axon skeleton and the appendicular skeleton will tackle one after another. So for today, uh, we will be discussing more of this, but in bit. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss more of this, but in a bit. Good. For today, my lesson is all about the, the hip cage and the sternum. What are they? The hip cage and the sternum. I will start with function. What is the function? Function of the hip cage and the sternum. One, production of hereditary cells. Production. Production of red blood cells. Production of red blood cells. That is the function of the hip cage. Remember when I've been talking about the, when I've been talking about the function of the skeleton. One of it was manufacture of blood cells, where small bones like the hip cage and the sternum are responsible for production of red blood cells, while the bone marrow of long bones produce one type of white blood cell called the leukocyte. Fine. Good. Play an important role. Play an important role. Play an important role in the process of inhalation, of inhalation and exhalation. You remember when, you talking about when we were doing gaseous exchange, breathing in, breathing out, in inspiration and expiration. We said during breathing out or during exhalation, the external intercostal muscle covering the hips will relax while the internal intercostal muscle contract. This makes the hip cage to move upward and outward. It makes the hip cage to move upward and outward. The muscles of the diaphragm flattens. The, the muscles of the diaphragm contract and therefore the diaphragm flattens. This increases the volume of the thoracic cavity higher than the that of the surrounding and therefore air rushes into the lungs, the lungs inflates. Remember that? During inhalation, just a brush over, during inhalation we said the internal intercostal muscle, internal intercostal muscle relaxes, while the external intercostal muscle relaxes, the rib cage moves inward and downward, the muscles of the diaphragm relaxes, forming a dome shape, the, and then the volume of the chest cavity is reduced, and therefore uh, the pressure inside increases than that one of the of the immediate surrounding, and therefore the high pressure within the thoracic cavity will force air out, and then when we breathe out, we say the lungs are deflated. Something like that. Good. Number three, the, uh, the third function of hip and sternum is provide protection, or it may protect. They protect. They protect the heart delicate organs. They protect the heart. They provide protection to the heart and lungs. Yes, they provide protection to the heart and lungs. Yeah. The delicate organs, we say the, 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 the heart, our heart, are found within the, the, the two lungs. Then we also say lungs are air bags that are located within the chest cavity. So they provide protection to this thing. But these are mainly the function. These are mainly the, the function of the, of the hip cage and the stomach. I will say now, when I talk about hips, we say ribs. Ribs. For the case of man, hips are 12 in number. For the case of man or for the case of human being, hips are 12 in number found on either side of the body, found on either side of the body. Found, for the case of man, hips are 12 in number, and if you want, we will count them and we will count. Hips are 12 in number. And they are found on either side of the body, not on the one side, they are found on this side and then they are found on this side. Good. Hips at the front, hips are joined. To the front, to the front, they are joined. At the front, they are joined to the stomach. And at the back, and at the back, to the vertebral column. Yeah. Hips, their, their hips are not hanging. 
at the front position, the ribs are attached to the sternum, to this particular bone here. And then at the back, I will discuss at the back, they are attached to the bones of the vertebral column. To the bones of the vertebral column. Again, when I'm talking about the hips, I classify them types of hips, types of hips, types of hips. We classify hips into three main parts or into three main categories. We have one, I have two hips. I have two hips. What are they? These are hips. These are hips. These are ribs that are joined to the vertebral column at the back. Yes? At the back. At the back. And, and to the sternum at the front. Good. I'm talking about the hips. Uh, I mean true hips. True hips are hips that are joined to the vertebral column at the back and then at the front they are attached to the sternum. They are attached to the sternum. The A7 number, this one, the A7 in number. The A7 in number. We will see. And then we have four strips. Four strips. Yes? What are they? These are hips that are joined to the vertebral column at the back. Are hips joined to the vertebral column at the back. To the vertebral column at the back. And to the cusp and to the costal cartilage at the at the front. And to the costal cartilage. And to the costal cartilage. Costal cartilage to the front. They are three in number. They are three in number. They are three in number. Good. The difference between this, the, the, the four ribs and the two and the true ribs is what holds them at the front. For the true, we say they are attached to the sternum. But to the four ribs at the front, they are attached to the costal cartilage. And those four ribs are three in number. And lastly, I have hanging ribs. I have hanging ribs. These are bones, these are ribs joined. These are ribs joined to the vertebral column. They are joined to the vertebral column at the front. They are joined to the vertebral column. They are joined to the vertebral column at the front. These are these are ribs that are only joined, that are only these are ribs. Are ribs? Good. These are ribs that are only joined. These are ribs that are only joined to the vertebral column. That are only joined to the vertebral. That are joined to the vertebral column. The back. Yes. Yes. These are ribs that are only joined to the vertebral column at the back. What holds them at the front? Nothing. As the name suggests, they are hanging. At the front, they are hanging. If we may see that, I want us to see the true and the false strips. I want us to see the true and the false strips. I said the true ribs are seven in number. Let's count them together. The true ribs, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then you can see this one at the front they are attached to the sternum, this bone at the front. 
they are attached to the sternum. And at the back, at the back, they are attached, of course, to the bones of the vertebral column. You can see, yes, they are attached to the bones of the vertebral column. All, all of them, they are attached to the bones of the vertebral column. The what about the four strips? The four strips are three in number, and the four strips are three in number. And these are one, two, three. This one, they are not attached to the sternum. You can see our sternum terminated somewhere here. Yes? Beyond here, we do not have sternum. But at the same time, we have ribs moving downward below the sternum. What holds them? Are they hanging? No. That's what we are calling here costal cartilage that are attached to. At the back, it's the same as the vertebral column. But we have two ribs. At the back, they are attached to the vertebral column. At the front, they are, they are not attached to the sternum, not attached to the costal cartilage, but they are hanging. They are here. These are the hanging ribs. These are the hanging ribs. We can see one is here. Yes, they are attached to nothing. Yes, it is here and then here. They are attached to nothing at the front. So basically, that's what we mean by four strips and two ribs. Four strips and two ribs. So very first, let me take you through the sternum. 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 Yeah. What I can say about sternum? Uh, sternum. The sternum. And we have seen what sternum is. The sternum is one of small bones. The sternum is made up of. The sternum is made up of small bones. Small bones called sternum rae. Small bones that are called the sternum rae. Good. These bones are attached at an immovable or fixed joint, and therefore, although it's made up of small bones, you will not see them moving, it just appears as one solid bone. Yes? The sternum holds the hips at the front. The sternum holds the hips at the front. Yeah, it's the one holding the hips at the front. It also contributes to providing protection to the internal organs, of course. Yeah. However, the sternum of uh, bags and the sternum of uh, flying vertebrates is modified to form a keel. The sternum of flying vertebrates or the sternum of bags, the sternum of bags is modified to form a keel. This is what now? What is this? What is this modification all about? This is to offer large surface area to offer a large this to offer large surface area for attachment of flight muscles. For attachment of flight muscles. Flight muscles are called the pectoralis. Flight muscles are called pectoralis. So they assist in muscles and therefore we must have uh, this, uh, this uh, muscles in place. And then to have large surface of these muscles, then we have what? The kill. For those of you who eat a lot uh, of babies or even chicken, as we talk of uh, pectoralis media and pectoralis minor. Good. So this is what I can say about the ribs and, 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 and the sternum. All about that. Uh, then I will move to vertebral column. I move to vertebral Column. Vertebral column. Yeah? It is that subtopic vertebral column that will take some of our time. Yeah? Vertebral column. Vertebral column. Good. Vertebral column. Vertebral column. So what are the bones of the vertebral column? 
Yaş, anlıyorum bir şey. Vata bırak falan. It is the back one of fucking ball. Vata bırak falan. Vata bırak falan. Smear above. Smear above. Small. Bones. Cold. Vata bırak. Smear up of small bones called vertebrae. Smear up of small bones called vertebrae. Good. Smear up of small bones called vertebrae. This vertebra sit on one another. The vertebrae sit on each other. The vertebrae sit on each other, forming a column. Forming a column, hence the name vertebral column. Hence the name vertebral. Hence the name vertebral column. Vertebrae, vertebrae are separated. Vertebrae, the bones of the vertebral column are separated by a disc of cartilage. Are separated by a disc of cartilage. Are separated by a disc of cartilage called intervertebral disc. Called intervertebral disc. Inter. Inter. Intervertebral disc. This of cartilage called intervertebral disc. The disc serves the disc. What is the role or what is the purpose? The disc serves the following. The disc serves the following roles. One reduces friction between vertebra. Reduces reduces friction. Reduces friction between vertebra. Yes, or between adjacent uh, vertebral bones. Two, it absorbs shock. Absorbs. Also absorbs shock. Sometimes we, we, we say the disc of cartilage also makes the vertebral column flexible, allowing it to do some degree of movement. Yes? It also, it makes. It makes. The vertebral column, if I mean, the, if the VC is to mean vertebral column, it makes the vertebral column flexible. It makes the vertebral column flexible, allowing it to do some degree of movement. Allowing a certain degree of movement. Allowing a certain degree of movement. Good. Allow me now to explain uh, something about this. Vertebral column. Good. When I talk of vertebral column, I say vertebral column is made up of small bones. If we can concentrate here. Vertebral column. Yes. You can see, when I'm talking about the vertebral column, I'm talking of the the, the, the backbone, generally the backbone, and the bones of the vertebral column starts immediately after the skull, they run from the neck region to the chest region, to the abdominal region, to the pelvic region, or around the central region, and they move up to the tail for those organisms that have tail, including the human beings whose tail is a vestigial structure, but there is a remain or a remnant of the tail called the cosy. Good. So these are the small bones I'm talking about. This is the, these are the small bones. Yes? This is what we are calling the bones of the vertebral column. Yes. They are small. The vertebral column is not one bone, but many of small bones. Those small bones is what we are calling. Those small, the vertebral column is made up of small bones called the vertebrae. This is what we are calling now vertebrae. Now these bones, they sit on one another. One vertebra sits on another one. Yes? Then they build up 
forming a column, and that's where they get their name vertebral column. The fact that they are made up of small bones are called vertebrae, and the way they arrange their vertical arrangement forms a column. Good. Vertebrae are separated by a disc of cartilage. These vertebrae are not fused like those bones of the skull, like those of the hips. They are not fused. They are separated by a disc of cartilage. It is feasible when I put it this way. Good. If we may try to see, yes, something whitish here, are we seeing? Good, yes, uh, yes, between two balls. Yeah, this is what I mean. Yeah, this is a disc of cartilage that separates one bone or one vertebral bone from the other. One vertebral bone from the other. Good. Vertebrae, okay, what is the function of that particular disc? One, he uses friction between vertebrae. You see, these bones, they could be loose during movement, like now when I'm moving, sometimes when you are doing your cocoa, when you are doing your sujud, when you are exercising, see, the, your bones of the vertebral column allow some degree of movement. During that movement, there could be possible uh, contact or could be possible friction between the two bones. That is enough. He uses friction between vertebrae, and then it also absorbs shock, and then I'm going to say it makes the vertebral column flexible, allowing a certain degree of movement. Certain degree of movement. Good. What is the general structure of a vertebra? How do a vertebra look like? Now we've been talking about the vertebral column as whole. If you consider one bone, yes? If you consider one of those bones, how does it look like? Good. General structure of a vertebra. General structure of a vertebra will be the next subtopic. And then in that subtopic, we'll see how a vertebra, in singular we call it vertebra, in plural we call it vertebrae. Yeah? When we consider one, how does it look like? It's structurally. Yes? And what are some of the parts of a vertebra? What are some of the parts of a vertebra? General structure of a vertebra. General structure. General structure. Of the vertebra. Yes. We draw together the general structure of vertebra. All vertebra conform to the same basic plan. Although the vertebra may be different or they may occupy different positions along the vertebral column, but all of them uh, conform to the same basic to the same basic plan, good, or vertebra conform to the same basic plan, good. What, has that, what is that plan? All vertebra may have the following parts, yes. Good. All vertebra may have this main part. They have this main part. We are now, this part I call this one the neural spine. We call this one the neural spine. We call that the neural spine. This lateral, proje this lateral projections on either side, we call them the transverse process. Transverse call them transverse process. And then the round thing here, we call it the centrum. Call it the centrum. Call it the centrum. Yeah? And then the hole that we're having at the center, or the canal at the center, we call it the neural canal. The neural the neural canal. Then above the neural canal, I have what we call 
the neural act it call the neural act good then this figure okay, this particular figure is a structure or general structure of vertebra general structure of vertebra the figure is general structure of vertebra general general structure of the vertebra general structure of the vertebra very briefly no matter where a given vertebra is found in the body no matter whether it's within the neck region whether within the chest within the, the abdominal or what all of them any vertebra be it even a caudal vertebra those that are found within the tail all of them they conform to the same basic plan in the sense that all of them may have a neural spine. All of them may have a neural arc, a neural canal, transverse process, central. Let's quickly let's see functions of this particular part. Neural spine, for example, I will start with neural spine. The neural spine, what is the function of the neural spine? The function of the neural spine. Neural spine, what is this? The neural spine, if you consider to the central, we say neural spine is also projection inclination to the centrum. When you see the position of the neural spine in relation to the centrum, it is also projected. So we say it is a, a muscle projection. It is a muscle projection. It is a muscle projection. That's about how it is uh, how it is positioned in relation to the centrum. But what is the function? The muscle projection. The function. This function is to offer a surface for muscle attachment. A surface for muscle attachment. Good. Then transverse processes also. Transverse, transverse processes. What are they? In terms of uh, how they are positioned, then we say transverse processes are lateral projections in relation to central. This are la this is a la these are lateral. These are lateral projection. These are lateral projection in relation to central. In relation to the central. Lateral, yeah, sideways in in relation to central. What is their function? Their function is to offer also the same as that, offer a surface for muscle and ligament attachment. Even that one, even your neural spine can say, offer a surface for muscle and ligament attachment. Muscle and ligament attachment. Ligament attachment. Ligament attachment. I will explain. Good. The other thing that I want to talk about is centrum. What is the role of centrum? When I say centrum, I mean this one. Centrum, centrum, we say centrum is a solid structure that, that uh, bears the weight of the centrum, uh, that, that bears the weight of the vertebra. The solid structure that supports the vertebra. It's a solid structure that bears, or that bears, the weight of the vertebra, the weight of the vertebra. Good. And then I also need to see what, what is the function of the neural canal. The neural canal, yes, that canal that runs through the center of the vertebral bones. This one is a passage, is a passage for spinal cord, passage for spinal Passage for spinal cord. Passage for spasm for spinal cord. And then I also have the neural arc. Say the neural arc forms the roof on the sides. It forms the roof and sides of the neural canal. It acts as a roof or acts as the side roofs 
of the mirror canal providing protection to the spinal cord, of course. Side, well, I'm providing protection. Good. What are some of these things I'm talking about? When I say the neural spine, I mean the, the neural spine is this one. Its function is it acts as a service for muscle attachment. If you ever came across this bonus when you were eating meat, these bonus are not, uh, uh, if you allow me to say that, they, they are not naked. At least they have got muscles covering them. And sometimes when you find them, you will try to remove some of the meat that is trapped in between the spinal cord and the transverse processes. Yeah. So it is also a projection, is to, and then the function is to offer a service for muscle attachment. The transverse processes, these are lateral projections in relation to centrum. That's about how they are positioned. But the function of transverse processes is to offer a, a service for muscle and ligament attachment. We all know muscle, but what is a ligament? I say ligament is a tissue that attaches a bone to another bone. A tissue that attaches a bone to another bone is what we, is what we are referring to ligament. Then centrum, this one. Centrum is a solid structure. And therefore we're saying it is where the bone, the basically the vertebra is sitting on the centrum. And then we say the centrum, its function is to provide support to the vertebra. It supports the vertebra in the sense that it is the one that is bearing, it is the one that is carrying the weight of the vertebra. Yeah. And then neural canal. The neural canal, the neural canal, I will also discuss that. Uh, if you may allow me, I, I will show you a good example of what I'm talking about. A good example of what I'm talking about. Yep. Uh, we will discuss this, but this is one of the bones that I came with. This is one of the bones that I came with. This is the centrum. This is the this is the centrum. This position is the centrum, and then I have got a hole that I'm trying to insert my finger in. That one is what we are calling the neural canal. That's the neural canal. This is the centrum, and then on the sides, of course, we have got transverse processes, and then this one at the tip here, we will see more bones. This one at the tip here is what I'm calling the neural spine. What I'm calling the neural spine. Good. The neural canal is the purchase for the spinal cord. We say when we have been discussing spinal cord and brain as a nervous organs under reception, response, and coordination, we say spinal cord is the posterior extension of the brain. It flows from the brain, moves through the, the vertebral column, and it goes like that. So it is a canal that, uh, that accommodates the spinal cord. Therefore, the spinal cord passes through that particular, and then the neural act. That's what I said. So to conclude with our lesson, I will say the vertebral column, bones of the vertebral column, are named or they are classified depending on the position they occupy within the vertebral column or the position, their position in, in the body. We conclude with that. Good. Let's see. Good. Yeah. I will start by saying vertebrae, vertebrae are named, are named depending on the position, are named depending, vertebrae are named depending on the position, on the position they occupy in the vertebral column or depending on their position depending on the position they occupy in the body position they occupy in the body which part of the body yes good each of this each of this have distinguishable each of this each of these position uh, bonds each of these have a distinguishable features distinguishable they have a distinguishable distinguishable features 
vertebrae are named depending on the position they occupy in the body. And then each of those vertebrae, they have a distinguish a distinguishable features that differentiates them, that makes them distinct from the other vertebrae. As now, yeah, we have cervical vertebrae. Cervical vertebrae, where are they? These are the vertebrae that are found around the neck region. A vertebrae, vertebrae, or these are vertebrae found in the neck region. Vertebrae found in the neck region. Two, I have thoracic vertebrae. Thoracic, thoracic vertebrae. Or are they uh, bones that are found or uh, a vertebrae that are found in the chest region? In the chest region. And then I also have lumbar vertebrae. Lumbar vertebrae are found in the abdominal region. Abdominal, abdominal region. And then I have sacral, sacral vertebrae. Yes, sacral vertebrae are found in the pelvic region. I found in the pelvic, pelvic region. And then lastly, we have caudal vertebrae. Caudal vertebrae, they are found in the pelvic region. Pelvic region. Yeah, this, one, this is what I'm talking about. And to conclude with, to conclude with, to conclude with, I said bones of the vertebral column, these bones of the vertebral column are classified or they are named depending on the position a vertebra occupies within the body. For example, those vertebra that are found around the neck region, this is, this is the neck region, those vertebra that are found in the neck region, this ones now, is what we are calling the cervical vertebrae. Mm -hmm. Those that are around, around the chest, if this is the chest, then there, those that are opposite to it, these ones now, these ones, yes. Yeah, they are all in number. Now this vertebral column, I mean this vertebrae that are found in the, in the chest region is what we are calling the thoracic vertebrae. Then those, are, those that are found around the abdominal region here, this one, the abdominal region, this region, this bones, is what we are calling lumbar vertebrae. And then there are those that are found within the chest region, those I mean within the pelvic region, around the pelvic guidos, yeah, yes, that are called the sacral region. And then lastly, we have, for those organisms that have got uh, the, the, a, a tail, there are bones that are found within their tail, we call them the vertical, call them the sub, we call them the caudal vertebrae. So basically, we will stop here for our lesson today. Thank you for watching, revise well, see you in the next lesson. Thank you.